Okay, uh, actually the topic is uh, the power of one in the uh, specialty marketing. I'm uh, the general manager of Galderma and we specialize solely in dermatology. Um, as it turns out, uh, I think my presentation is going to be a nice uh, summary of a number of presenters. So let's start off first with uh, a question and as it reads, what is the policy at your company regarding physician engagement? Uh, you have an open door policy, you encourage interaction with physicians at all times at all levels. Your MLRs are constantly in touch with their constituency. Uh, your company feels they take a pulse of the doctors regularly at medical conferences and meetings. We'd like to do social networking, but Ray Chebsek won't let us. And ah hell, uh, we don't do anything. So if you want to vote. <laughs> Okay, I guess it depends if you're Rx and D or not. All right, um, moving on to the presentation. Um, the first slide is the complexity of the N of 1, and um, I had a bit of fun researching this. Who would have thought the N of 1 was so darn complicated? It's full of graphs and combinations and mathematical computations, but really it's also chock full of a couple of buzzwords that are highlighted. Um, exponential value, the product that is itself, and the actual power of one, and you can see the power of one is itself. But since uh, I stem from a simple background of sales and marketing, I like to keep it simple and think about the added value, the additive property that the N of one provides to all of us out there. So is it one to the power N or N to the power one? Well, I guess the question that it provoked in my mind was, can one patient you know, affect the prescribing habits of a physician. Well, uh, outside of my realm, I thought maybe an erectile dysfunction, yes, this was probably a very good thing. I've seen the commercials. They all seem to be quite happy uh, with the results. Um, however, keeping in that same vein, uh, priapism might also not be a great patient experience that could affect the prescribing habits of a doctor. For those of you who do not know what priapism is, uh, please ask a colleague and discuss amongst yourselves. I will not suffer from that. Uh, secondly, can the N of 1 or 1 to the power N affect uh, the success of your drug if it's a doctor involvement? So I would say yes. You could have a good in in investigator experience. And Eileen, if you hadn't have been here on the panel, I would have also called them users. So any doctor who is a user of your uh, drug, but uh, being married to a lawyer, I'm very fearful of uh, connoting anything. Uh, that could get me in trouble. So um, you could also have an otherwise a bad experience, again, if that investigator or user is on your drug and doesn't have a good experience. So why am I uh, thinking of the power of one and how did it come to mind? And I have to admit that um, quite often I'm quick to dismiss the power of one, um, particularly in a sales meeting where a lot of hands go up with the N of one explaining the one doctor, the one patient out there, and I'm trying to run a, what I feel is a macro meeting. Uh, on the other side, I don't know if very many uh, doctors would accept a clinical study with the N of one, but then again, reflecting on it in my area, and Dr. Madden's already touched on it, uh, they're treating anywhere between 60 to 100 N of ones a day, so maybe it is actually a very good uh, proposition to think of. In the end, I guess it really boils down to what a lot of speakers have talked about. Are you really vested in doctor-centric marketing or really patient-centric marketing? In the dermatology market, for sake of argument, let's say there's about 5,000 doctors who really prescribe topical dermatology products. Uh, on the horizontal axis, you have the number of physicians. On the vertical axis, the number of prescriptions. I think uh, for those of you, us who made it through high school, which I believe is all of us, you'll agree that this graph does depict quite an exponential function in my marketplace. If we use Pareto's principle, trying to sound smart, of course, but really it's the 80-20 rule, and it really highlights again a couple of key words. This is the law of the vital few, and certainly in dermatology, I think that really sums up our situation. If you take the 20% of the doctors out of that 5,000 who write about 80% of the business, we boil it down to a nice round number of 1,000 prescribing doctors. Then again, taking that even further, you can see that, that again, 80-20 rule amplifies the magnitude of the value of 200 
But even more importantly, how about the value of the N of 1, and are we not all seeking the fella or gal who writes close to 9,000 scripts a year? So what is the value of 1 in dermatology? Well, arguably, I'd say there's about 500 uh, dermatologists writing product in our marketplace. They do follow Pareto's rule, the 80-20, the law of the vital few. And if we lose one dermatologist, and I'll take the example in low-potency topical corticosteroids, it in fact takes us two pediatricians to make up the business of one dermatologist. So, in this case, it is complicated. The N of one is actually two. And with GPs, we actually have to seek out 10 new GPs to replace the value of that one dermatologist. So the message here is, of course, again complicated, the N value is now 10. So I'd like to cite a couple examples, good and bad. When is the N of one good? When is not dismissing uh, the N of one worked out nicely? Um, well, uh, with our current uh, earlier presenter, Dr. Stuart Madden, uh, I've had uh, a good N of one experience. And that was during the launch of Different when I was hired uh, by Galderma some uh, 17 years ago. I was introduced to Dr. Stuart Madden as we were sipping champagne on the French Riviera of the launch of Different. Now, before there's any post-conference gossip that stems from this, I'd like to clarify that our research center is located in the south end of France. Dr. Madden's favorite drink is champagne. I was merely doing my job. <laughs> so, uh, during this uh, nice uh, discussion, Dr. Madden, and I was a young impressional marketer for Galderma at the time, was extolling the virtues of the property you heard about, Derm Update, for which Galderma had really not been an active participant. And he was telling me of the win-win situation that could be had if Gal Galderma would please enter into this wonderful conference. Well, to make the long story short, it was a win-win. I'd have to say Stuart benefited from the fact that we did fund uh, Derm Update and have been since ever since. But what Galderma ended up was the good. We got the leverage of Dr. Stuart Madden, the godfather of Canadian dermatology, likely the most recognized and influential Canadian dermatologist out there. So thank you, Dr. Madden. Keep up the good work. Okay, and when is it bad? And I, you know, was a bit hard pressed to come up with something relevant to the group. So I said, okay, well, I think when we dismiss the N of one and it hit home, so what does that mean? Well, what if the N of one that I've been dismissing all the time is the doctor who's actually telling the rep about my case? So maybe that dismissal I've been pursuing or avoiding all along, uh, I should take another look at it. And I guess even more importantly, and John Haslam, you brought this up and hit it home with your presentation, how vital is it to me when that N of one is actually my family? So, are we truly invested in the N of one? And I stick to this topic as marketers, in all marketing, are we not seeking the holy grail, that one single power of our product that has relevancy in the marketplace, that uniquely solves a need out there, that distinguishes value in our product versus our competitor, or even more, what's that compelling reason to do business with us? So I decided to quickly flick through the Chronicles of Skin and Allergies last issue to see what examples I could find of this quest in dermatology. and. You'll see here, I kind of stuck on topic. I left it with the N of one. There were products that were quoting over one million patients treated, the highest, the only, and Mitch, I couldn't avoid giving you a plug. Canada's first publication for practitioners on aesthetics uh, medicine. So there are examples out there of people at least trying to or believing that they're on the quest for the holy grail, the single power, that N of one. However, I do wonder, to whom are we really directing the version of this single power to be meaningful? Is it really to us, our internal stakeholders, or to them, our external customers? So, question two, I guess based on what I'll call a reflective presentation and walking the talk, what do you feel your company's ability is to affect the N of one? You feel you're already doing it, it's impractical for our organization, it's a neat thought, we have no time, uh, or it works in some markets and not others. If you wouldn't mind voting. 
Okay, you're already doing it. Excellent, glad to hear. In conclusion, I leave you with these three points. Don't dismiss the power of one. It may mean going from being the great one to being the perfect one. I am a basketball fan. Thank you.